My name is Heather Smith and tonight we're, I'm presenting an overview of processing payroll and BAS in MYOB and Xero, so two different accounting solutions. Uh, just a bit of background about me. I'm an ambassador and fellow of the ACCA. Uh, I hold a Bachelor of Commerce degree from um, Australia. I uh, did that in 89 and I am a Xero and MYB consultant. I'm also um, an author. Uh, you should be able to find my first book, Learn MYB in Seven Days, at your local bookstore. And my next book, Learn Small Business Startup in Seven Days, should be out uh, early next year. It takes an amazingly long time for them to finish off the process. So it is actually entirely written and uh, they have to go through typesetting and publishing. So that just gives you, um, so you know who's on the other end of this uh, webinar. That's me, my dog and my kids. Now, at any time you're welcome to ask questions. Uh, hopefully that they're going to be on topic questions and I will do my best to answer them and sometimes people from the audience uh, can also answer them. So to ask the questions, um, during the webinar you'll be muted so you, uh, I can't hear you and no one can hear you. Uh, this means essentially we don't hear any background noises, typing dogs, uh, parking phones, dogs barking, oh no dogs barking that should be, phones ringing and kids crying. Um, you should, however, at this point in time be able to hear me. So if you can't hear me, let me know. Um, I know people have told me they can already hear me, so uh, you'll need to check your own computer speakers and make sure that you have the sound turned on. Now, you have a control panel on your screen. You should be able to see that. Come to the control panel and if you come over here and you actually click on that, it will be a little plus and it will open up like this and you can type in questions. And so uh, that gives me the opportunity to say, um, this person has asked this question and I will talk about this now. Uh, so don't feel that you don't, don't want to ask a question. Please ask any questions as we go through. Um, and I need to get, change my tool there. And my Twitter handle is heathersmith at heathersmithau if you want to send me a tweet afterwards. So I think that has essentially uh, done with my PowerPoint presentation. So let's have a look um, initially at uh, MYOB. Now let's not look at that one. We'll go in and we will look at, I'll open up a version of MYOB. For the sample company, okay. And here we have, here we have the sample. Sorry, I know sometimes my voice goes a bit when I move screens like that, so I'll just hopefully you can hear me now. Here we have the sample Clearwater file. You can download MYOB for free and access a trial version and have a look at this version. So this is Clearwater and so we're looking at setting up payroll. So the first thing you'd set up in payroll is you come up here into setup and click on uh, general payroll information and up here we are actually the current payroll year is ending June the 30th 2012. So uh, we won't actually be able to enter anything as per this date. We'll need to roll the payroll year. We can set the number of hours in a full-time work week. Here in Australia, the full-time work week is typically 38. So I'll override that. And typically it is 38. You would need to check if it is different. Withholding payee number. In all my years, I've never seen someone use this. It's supposedly if you like have normal staff, but then you have one person who's like a, um, a housekeeper or a, a, a nanny or someone like that, and they have a different uh, number there. If you pay people cash, uh, you would use this op option here to round the cents down. Uh, but again, that rarely happens these days unless you're maybe in a supermarket or a fish and chip shop. The tax table revision date, you uh, would want to see here 1st of the 7th, 2012, so I'll go through the process of trying to update that. When you use MYOB, you have to uh, 
update your tax tables at the start of every payroll year. So the payroll year starts on the 1st of the 7th, 1st of July, and you have to update your tax tables. This is because the budget comes down, and when the budget comes down, uh, they always make changes to payroll, and you have to update uh, your rates accordingly. If they uh, didn't make all these changes, we'd, all the small business owners would actually save a lot of money they wouldn't need to pay for tax table revisions. And here in Australia, when it comes to superannuation, the business actually needs to choose a default superannuation fund. So you need to select what is going to be the superannuation fund for this particular business. So let's click on here, and we have a few in here. So I'll just choose Spectrum Super. What this means is if I, as a, uh, if I, as a business owner, um, employ someone and they don't tell me what super they belong to, I'm still obliged to pay them super. So I set them up an account in Spectrum Super and I uh, pay them into that account. This is one of the reasons that people here in Australia end up having multiple superannuation accounts. And you probably see those adverts on TV, uh, track down your superannuation, contact us and we'll track down your superannuation because You've worked for someone and they just pay it in and people perhaps aren't aware of that. So um, that is a tip if you have worked here for a while, track down your superannuation and roll them together. Uh, now here we have the opportunity to print the superannuation choice form. I'm not sure if it will work for us. It looks like it might. See how I go. So this gives me the opportunity to print this form. I'll only print it for one person. Um, and I'm going to print OK. I print it using Qt PDF, so that's a uh, really good, cheap little, oh, it's actually free download. Um, I'm just printing this so I can show you it. And let's see if I can just go and grab that and show you that form. Hmm, where has it gone? Hmm. Oh, I can't find it. I'm not sure where I printed it to. Okay, well, that, that form, um, I thought I printed it to my desktop, but maybe I didn't. I'll try it quickly again. Print, okay, keep you there, print. And I did print it to my desktop. And maybe I printed it under here. No, it hasn't gone under there. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay, this is the form that printed from there. So this is my choice of superannuation fund that automatically prints from MYOB. And you can see that you actually have to fill in the information. So um, what happens is you employ someone, you then have to issue them with this form, and they have to return it to you within 30 days. However, if they don't return it to you, you don't necessarily need to chase them for it. You will just pay into that default superannuation fund. So uh, this situation is, um, the other thing I need to mention is that when you give them the form, you actually have to get them to sign to say that they have received the form. Okay, you sign, get them to sign to say they've received the form. So they just essentially fill it in and it tells them, look, if you don't fill out the form, we're just going to send it to Spectrum Super. Okay, so I'm closing down there. and. Um, um, now I'm pulling back up on MYOB and this, uh, this area here allows me to set up payroll tax. The different states and territories have different payroll taxes if you earn above a set amount of money. Sorry, if you pay payroll above a set amount of money, you have to set up the different payroll taxes. So it's typically quite a large payroll that that, that attracts. And that is where you go through and set it up. 
but I seem to recall that with NYRB you can actually only set it up for one state, so you'd need to amend it if you needed to see it for another state. Okay. And clicking on OK there, so the next thing that I want to show you is if I click on Set Up again, this is here is where I load the payroll tax table. So I'm going to click on that and because the tax tables were not correct at the moment and I'm going to load them. I'm then pop back here to Set Up, Load Payroll Tax Tables. doesn't tell me um, which one it did load. Accounts, Company Data Auditor, and you can see here I've now got the 1st of the 7th 2012 payroll tax tables. So that means I'm up to date, so that's a good thing. Now, the next thing that you want to do in payroll is set up an employee card file. So I'll come over here to card file and I'll click on card list and across the top here I have employees. So I have four employees set up in this business already. This is the Clearwater file. Wherever you see a white zoom arrow, it's a drill arrow and I click on that to drill down. And you can see here, this is uh, profile information and this is just general address information here, okay? And then if I move from that, if I click on card details, uh, this is again just general information, not really relevant to payroll. It's when I get to this option that I get to the payroll information. So you can see here, I have date of birth, her calculated age, her gender, um, the start date, so this is when she actually started, and the termination date. I'd highlight to you that if you are terminating someone, don't hurry to put the termination date in. Uh, just hold off maybe until the end of the financial year because it will um, automatically delete some of the entitlement information. And also I find people frequently leave and then they come back and they leave again, you have to open it all up again. So just leave that um, and just realise they've terminated but leave that. The employment basis you can fill out here and if we look at the options for that, it could be individual, labour hire or other. The employment categories can be either permanent or temporary and the employment status full-time, part-time, other or casual. Now you need to, um, part of uh, the current obligations, you need to actually put the employment classification there. So uh, for this person we'll just, we can actually add one, so we'll go easy add, oh, easy add, um, I'm not sure what she is but I'm not even secretary. Easy add and I just was able to add that, so her employment classification there. Essentially it's her job title or if, if she's a, a paid under a particular award. Then we come down to how her payslip will be delivered and this has the option that it will be both printed and emailed. You want to encourage your employees to accept uh, their payslip by email, this will save you money and time and when they give you their email address you have to actually ask for their permission for the email address to be emailed to them. Notice if I click back here on profile there is actually an email address there, however if I pop here it may, it can be different because sometimes people don't want their general email to be where their payroll goes. So then you click on wages and you have the pay basis option of salary or hourly. Notice I've set, she's been set up as salary, however I encourage you to always set people up as hourly. I encourage you to always set people up as hourly. Notice that her annual salary didn't change there. Notice what we now have is an hourly rate there. Uh, this person is going to be paid weekly and the hours in the pay period for this person is 40, uh, so we could reduce that down to 38 if we wanted. And wages for this person, Mary, will go to wages and salaries. Now in this area here, this is what has, be, has been ticked for this person to be associated with. So they are getting base hourly pay, they are getting holiday pay, oops, sorry, and they are getting sick pay. They're not getting any of this overtime or any other fancy things here like bonuses. The next one along is superannuation 
and they are uh, linked to superannuation. This person, Mary, has selected AMP Life and the employee membership has been put in there. Uh, she is getting a basic superannuation guarantee plus she has an additional um, superannuation, a salary sacrifice superannuation. So there's a couple of things. I'm, I'm, while I'm showing you that, I only have a short time to show you everything. So I'm going to click on uh, lists, superannuation funds, and you can see here where we actually have the superannuation funds and the opportunity to put more information in about these superannuation funds. Clicking on close there. And if I come down here and click on superannuation guarantee, click on that, here we have superannuation guarantee and the actual setup for it. So the main things that you need to know here is the expense account for superannuation is goes to an expense account, superannuation expense, and the payable account for superannuation payable goes to superannuation payable here. Um, it must print on the pay advice. The standard is 9% and if you want to pay more then you can pay more but the standard is 9%. It's calculated once eligible wages over 450 have been paid in the month. So if they've paid $100 and, uh, in the first week and then $100 in the second week and in the third week they're paid $250, their superannuation would actually come in at 9% of $450. Okay? Now if I pop back and grab my pen again, clicking here um, under uh, exempt, this highlights what wages, what payments do not attract superannuation. So unused holiday pay doesn't attract superannuation. Overtime doesn't attract superannuation. Holiday leave loading, bonuses, advances do not attract superannuation payments. Okay. Then we move on to entitlements. And here we actually have holiday leave accrual and sick leave accrual. Now, the correct name for this is actually, I'm going to click on it, it's actually, and I'm changing it, annual, annual leave accrual. And we have here that it is equaling um, a percentage of gross hours or hours per pay period. And they've obviously selected that. That it prints on the pay advice. Yes, it must print on the pay advice. And typically, it must carry over into the next year. However, if you're a small business, you want to encourage people to take um, their holiday uh, within the year. Otherwise, it will build up. Um, holiday is uh, entitlement is four weeks, typically four weeks. I'm going to click OK on that. And I'm popping here to sick leave. Sick leave is no longer called sick leave, it's called personal leave. And the reason for that is that it actually encompasses, um, it actually encompasses people who take um, time off maybe to look after their children. So they're not necessarily sick, but they take time off to look after their children. This now has to be printed on the pay advice and uh, again, carry remaining entitlement over to the new year. Now, you'd have to look at the documentation, the contract that the employee signed, but typically that's what it is. And I'm clicking OK on that. And so this person is getting um, accruing those entitlements year to date, total. We have deductions, typically not many deductions. Employee expenses, again, I rarely see employee expenses. This person, unfortunately, can't avoid paying taxes and the taxes, if I click on this drop down arrow, this are the numerous tax rates that are available. Uh, you can see lots of different options here and you need to ensure the person is selected for the correct tax rate, otherwise they will um, accrue tax at the wrong amount and at the end of the year they may end up paying more tax than they anticipated. It can be difficult because some people um, for instance, have the tax-free threshold and help, which is higher education loan payment, and they, they attract it halfway through the year, and they really need to tell you about it, but sometimes they don't. Uh, tax file number must be filled in, and I normally suggest, I'm going to copy that, I normally suggest you put the tax file number there, and if I pop back tax, so you can, you can actually know that you've got the tax file number there, Click on that and 
here I have standard pay, so this is actually um, the standard pay for that person. And I'm going to click OK on that. So that's what the standard pay will be as we work through um, a processing payroll for them. I'm going to click OK on that, click Close on that, and there are a few things else that I need to show you about. I'm going to pop over here to Payroll, and I'm in Payroll, and I'm going to show you um, Payroll Categories. And here in Payroll Categories, these are all the categories that are set up for wages. So you will have um, seen them before, but what we need to do is see how this says sick pay. We actually need to change it to personal pay. We also see how here it says automatically. Here I'll highlight it for you. It says here automatically adjust base hourly or base salary details. You need, we need to tick that. That means that when we pay them something, it will uh, automatically deduct off their normal wage, and that's what we want it to do. Okay, clicking on OK, and up here again, as we did before, that needs to be annual, and uh, that's oh, that was annual leave loading. Okay, annual leave loading is something funny. I don't actually think we have it anymore this year, so don't worry about that. But I do need to worry about holiday pay. So annual pay. Yeah, no, so this one actually uh, doesn't come through anymore, annual leave loading. But annual pay we need to worry about. And so that, again, tick on this option here, automatically adjust base hourly or base salary details. Um, and you'll notice it has exemptions there, but none of them have been ticked. It also has employee that you can see here and see who's actually ticked to receive annual pay. Now, why do you think Sue Smith is not receiving annual pay? It could be because she is a casual employee, and that's why she's not receiving it, okay? And I'm going to click OK. So that was my wages. My superannuation, it comes through by default with loads of superannuation, but typically the only one I use is superannuation guarantee. Uh, notice I don't have AMP superannuation, uh, Sun Super superannuation. I just have one. They all will go through to that one. Click on Entitlements, and I'll click on. Um, you can see here Annual Leave Accrual, Personal Leave Accrual, and if I go through further, um, oh, and I'll highlight to you that there it has now changed to Annual Pay. Last time it was different. And again, deductions, expenses, taxes. This is the same as what we saw in the employee card file that we uh, looked at. So that, that was payroll categories, okay? Payroll categories. So what we need to do is just because we're working in an artificial environment, I actually need to roll the payment year over. So I'm just going to go File, Start a New Year, Start a New Payroll. So typically you just wouldn't do it like this. You do a lot of checks, but I'm just going to start a new payroll year. Continue. It's going to erase all my payroll history. Continue, continue, and I'm going to start a new payroll year. Fantastic. So what I do is um, it's, uh, what day is it? Monday. I need to pay someone on Monday. I click on Process Payroll. And I'm processing all people who are weekly, and I'm going to fill out this form here. You can see on the um, on the left hand side, I actually have this wizard, and I'm going to work through all of these options here. So um, I'm processing all employees paid weekly. The payment date is uh, today. I must um, give them a pay slip within. Um, um, I must give them a pay slip within um, a day of entering, uh, processing their payroll and uh, paying it into them. This payment date must be the actual payment date. And, and um, the pay period starts, let's just go and check what the pay period starts. So we'll go on the 11th and pay to the, so that's a whole week, so that's fine. Clicking on next, and um, these have the automatic payments that have come up through here. And what I do is I untick all of them, 
tick on that one and um, choose the options here, fill this out. So the base salary that actually came through is base salary, PAYG came through. And if I needed to alter anything, I would do there. But she's salaried. So yeah, she's salaried. So I click OK. So because she's salaried, I would have thought that she was entitled to that entitlement before. I look at Peter Parker. He's actually, oh, he's salary too. Who was uh, Mary Jones? Mary Jones is hourly. So you can see that she's hourly there. So that says 38 and that says hourly. So watch this. I'm going to watch that 91346 there. I'm going to go 7 here. And you'll see that changed and that changed and that changed. And, but the net pay should have stayed the same. Okay, so we're automatically changed. And that was because we selected that option uh, before that it would automatically change. Now, I just had a question come through, um, but it was a bit too complicated for the overview that we're doing at the moment. So um, I'm going to click OK on that, and I tick on the left-hand side, and I click um, Record. I, uh, I can click here to preview um, payroll details, previewing payroll details. Now, I should highlight that law has been passed that you must include when superannuation will be paid. However, it has not been defined yet, so it has passed, but we've not been told the details of it yet. So I click on record, click on continue, click OK, and we have prepared that, we've processed that payroll, and we're in a position to print the checks or prepare the electronic payment. I can click on next, and if I click here, I can print all of these out, or I can email them. If you are going to email them, uh, Let's see if I go here. Um, if I go here, go to this site called Click Yes. Okay, go to this site called Click Yes and get this little tool out. It only only takes you just it takes about three or four seconds to download. There it is, and it stops this e this uh, email window popping up all the time. Um, and that can save you lots of time if you use that. Okay, so, <coughs> so I'm going to finish that. I've processed the payroll, and we're going to prepare, pretend that I'm now going to pay the liability. So I pop over here to the right-hand side, and I'm clicking on Pay Liability, and I'm pretending it's the end of the BAS period, 1st of the 7th, 2012, through to um, July, August, September, 30th of September. And over here on the top left, I'm going to choose taxes. And that has highlighted the actual taxes that were processed just in that period. If we go edit, recap transaction, you'll actually see those uh, all four of those taxes and they just lump into that one single one. So that's a really good option there. The other thing that you can do is superannuation. And you've got all the different superannuation of these people. And what you can then do is choose sort by super fund. And so you would come down and you go, ah, I'll tick you two and pay a single check into CBUS, or I will tick you two and pay a single check into AMP Life. Okay, so processing payroll. Um, uh, I've only got a quick few minutes to show you again. The other thing that you need to know about payroll um, is printing the payment summaries. So if I click here and I select this top one, individual non-business, again what I have is I have a wizard to work through. Now I um, frequently run webinars towards the end of the payroll year for the ACCA. Um, this allows you to uh, this is a wizard that allows you to produce payment summaries, but you must go through, reconcile all your payroll information, and make sure that it is okay. That it is okay. Clicking on next, make sure all the information is filled out. 
click on next. You need to make sure that this is all set up as it needs to be set up. So if I click on um, allowances, I could perhaps go allowances bonus. I've just made that up. Um, otherwise, you can click on here and you can see total tax withheld and the PAYG there as well. Click on next. Oh. Okay, and it wants an allowance, so I just click on, what was it? It was a uh, com uh, commission. Click on next. And if I had reportable employee superannuation contributions, I would enter them here. And uh, I could link the superannuation categories. If you're unsure of that, I would highlight to um, find assistance from your accountant with that. Click on next or speak to the ATO. Um, I know that I speak to them when I go, come through to doing that, but it can be quite a long chat. Click on next, reportable fringe benefits tax. Click on next. This is where you put the tax file numbers in. You can save your payment summary. So if I just click on save and it popped up over here. Oh, wrong ones. Um, it clicked on save. I'll just click on, uh, I won't show you those. So it save payment summaries or you can actually click through and print on the payment summaries. I'll click on next. This then allows me to print a verification report. It advises me that um, four records are in this, um, uh, four records are um, in this document that I'm going to lodge. The total tax withheld was $803. Total gross payments was $4205. And I'm going to click on next there, create an empty dupe file, print my magnetic media form, and I can either upload that EMP dupe file through my BAS portal or I can uh, upload it using a system called Gov Reports. And uh, there you have it. So that, that would uh, result in me processing that. And I'll click Next. I'd make a backup of the file and then I would roll the payroll year over. So that was a very brief, very quick look at payroll. I will highlight um, down here under reports. We have a whole section of reports under payroll. Um, I'll highlight that you should compare your activity summary to your register summary report to make sure that they're the same. I will highlight that you should look at your entitlement. I think this is the one I like to look at. Uh, entitlement balance summary. And so you can actually see here for each individual person the total value of their um, entitlements. I click um, and if they leave, you will have to pay out their annual leave. If they, um, you don't have to pay out their personal leave. Okay, you pay out the annual leave, not their personal leave. Clicking on close. And I'm going to click on close on that again. Um, so that's looking at MYAB uh, and that's looking at payroll very quickly. I, does anyone have any questions about payroll? Um, I know one came through but it's quite a complicated one for, for, for me to do in this session. Um, does anyone have any other questions about payroll they'd like to ask now? Otherwise I'll move over to looking at the other section I was going to look at. Okay. So I'm going to pop down on that. Oh, can you? Pr oh, okay, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I've been asked, can you print a payment summary for an employee before the year end? Yes, you definitely can. So if someone works for you in um, sort of, what's it, July, August, September, and then they leave, they go overseas or something, yes, you definitely can print them out for them. And the other thing that I should highlight is I, I just worked for a business and I, I, um, I went through and checked the whole thing on this. So what they did was they had staff who would come in and work for two months and then leave for two months and then come back for two months and then leave for two months. So every time they left, she treated them as, has, um, uh, she terminated them, created a whole new setup for them. And so at the end of the payroll year, they were issued like six payment summaries, which is, which is not correct. You sh they should only be getting one payment summary, so they should continually be going straight back on the same card file. Okay. Any other questions there? 
Okay, oh look, I logged, it logged me out while um, I was waiting there. I just put my password back in. Okay, brilliant. So now I'm going to um, show you, I'm going to go and show you, I'm going to look at BAS, but I'm going to show you it in a different system. So this is, um, this is zero. Now before I do that, I'd just like to, let's have a, um, let's, uh, let's, I'm going to launch a poll for you to have a go at answering. So can you have a go at filling that in and we'll see the answers there. So the question is, have you ever used MYOB? Okay, <laughs> this also checks to see who's there listening to what we're doing. <laughs> Okay, so have you ever used MIOB? Now the the uh, results are that 67% um, of you have used MIOB, but not everyone has voted yet. Okay, anyone else to vote? Okay, well 68% of you have used MIOB, and 32% of you have you have not used MIOB. Well, that's interesting. Now the other uh, oh. Didn't mean to answer that, and so I will close that poll, and I will share the results. Oh, didn't share the results. There, that shared the results. Have you ever used MYB? And I will ask another poll. So let's hide. Oh, and so now let's go and ask about zero. So how many of you have used zero? Because we're going to quickly have a look at zero and uh, see. Oh, and <laughs> okay, so 82% of you have never used zero. So um, let's poll in progress. Sorry, no, I shouldn't say 82% of you. So if I share that. If I share that, 100% of you have never used Xero. So that's fabulous. So this will give you an opportunity to see this uh, new system. Um, it is a very good system, so I, I, I would recommend you have a look at it. And let's have a go. So I'm now going to hide that and hide that. And you can now see Xero. So um, none of you have used or seen Xero. Now, the purpose of me uh, doing this session today was to show you BAS as well, which is rather a lot. That was what I was asked to do, do pay payroll and BAS. Um, I'm going to highlight, this is what Xero looks like. It's online. See how this is This is where I log in? I, I, I log in to, to, to get to it. And what the, um, what the great thing about Xero is, is because it's online, what happens is I have this bank account. So this is, this is a demo company, obviously. It's not my real company. I have this demo company and I... Um, I uh, unlock the bank transactions from the real bank, from ANZ, from the real bank, and they feed automatically into um, Xero. So they actually feed automatically into Xero and uh, into, um, into Xero. So if you actually uh, look, every morning I wake up and I log in and I go, ah, this is arrived in here and I um, code it and it sometimes knows where it should be coded and I think oh it knows where it should be coded and then other times it doesn't know where it should be coded and I have to tell it where to code it. So a really good system, have a look at it but what I was going to do was we were looking at, we looked at payroll and NYB and now I'll look at BAS over here in uh, Zero because they're both kind of the same sort of processes. So in terms of BAS, if I click on um, settings and I click on general settings and down on the bottom left hand side, I have here my tax rates. And here I have um, numerous tax rates and these are what has been set up in zero and I have the actual tax rate at the side and this highlights what the accounts are that are using this particular tax rate. Okay. Um, so 
if I click on one, let's click on a very typical one, which would be GST on expenses. So this says I'm GST on expenses. It will be reported on my activity statement under purchases. The component is GST and the rate is 10% and I'll click save on that. Okay. Then I'm going to pop up and I'm going to click again under my settings dashboard and I'm going to pop down and click on chart of accounts. And here you have my chart of accounts. Now you'll notice at the top it has the option add account. It also has the option add bank account and uh, my other various things there. So initially, um, let's see if I can just call up a few. So I'm just looking at my assets there. So it's just got a few accounts there. It comes through with these three, um, three numbered codes. And you can see here, this is, is the actual ANZ bank account. But these are uh, assets. So if I click on office equipment, fixed asset, the unique code, office equipment. Um, office equipment that is owned and controlled by the business. And um, that has a default GST code allocated to it. So that's the big thing. You actually have to allocate the default GST code and that's how it will flow through. Um, I'll also highlight, and being um, ACCA members, you will understand that this says account type fixed, fixed assets and over here on the balance sheet, you can see where it's highlighting where it will actually appear. Click on um, save and click on save and uh, I will highlight to you also if I click on add bank account, if it works for me, come on. Oh, maybe because it's a Maybe because it's a demo company, it won't let me add a bank account. Well, that's fair enough. Um, but you'll see as you highlight back here, as I pull back out, I can see the name of all my accounts with further information there, the type of the account, the tax rate that's on it, and the year-to-date total. And I have liabilities, equity, expenses, revenue, etc. Okay? So you, you will be familiar with those terms. If you actually have to close down um, an account or archive it, it pops over here into archive. That's interesting. Now, so what I want to highlight to you is um, if you get access to zero, sometimes when people give you access to zero, you actually can't see this option here. So the access, it actually doesn't have that available to it. And you need to, if you're the consultant or the business owner and you want access, you need to come in and say, oh, look, I need access to my advisor. It doesn't cost you any more. You just ask, ask for it, okay? And you get access to that. It's actually, mm, it might not even show, let me show you. Just if I click on users. Okay, so I'm set up as a user financial advisor and uh, payroll administrator. So that you need to have that full setting to be able to access that area. So if I click on advisor and here, where is it? Activity statement. So, oh, I know what I didn't do. I didn't set up my activity statement, did I? So if I pop back over here to settings, general settings. And so here is my organization settings. If I click on that, and uh, all the demo companies, that's all just the company name. So this will all flow through. So important to have all the information there. Um, financial settings. So over here on the right hand side, you've got financial settings. And this is where you put in your financial year end, your period lock date, end of year lock date. Um, your GST accounting method. Now, most businesses really run on a, uh, a cash basis, but we won't change it. Tax file number, GST and how it's processed. PAYG, so you'll know that PAYG can be done, you can not be registered for it. You can be do it monthly or you can do it quarterly. 
and what PAYG income tax method you can choose. Okay, and what time zone you're working in. So let's put in, oh, Casablanca, that sounds romantic, doesn't it? Do -do -do. There, we'll put in Brisbane, since I'm in Brisbane. And we'll click on Save on that. So that actually set up the template, template of it, okay? Now, if I click back here on Advisor and I click on the Activity Statement, and here, so it's actually come up with an instalment statement there, so we'll go 1st of July, July, August, September. And the statement I'm going to opt for is a business activity statement, and I'm going to click Update. Now, of course, if I was doing this, I would have had all of my accounts reconciled. So I'm assuming that, that you, you understand and know that everything would have been reconciled and everything would have been checked at this point in time, okay? So what happens, this is my actual business activity statement. You can see the ABN comes through, the accounting method comes through. All of these, this, this um, area came through automatically and I can't really edit it. At the moment, the PAYG is manual, so you would actually need to go in and override it. So you could um, process it elsewhere, you could process it by hand and override it. And all of that actually needs to be added in. So you'll see if I actually come, see how there it says 14.28. And if I go in and put um, total salary 1,000 um, and then uh, I'll just go to there, amounts withheld, that's now changed to 1430 because it recognised the two. The thousand really is irrelevant to it other than a statistical purpose. It also um, has PAYG income tax instalment which would actually be on your BAS paper or in your portal and you could fill that in there. Um, and you can list your, uh, if you've varied for the quarter, why you've varied and you can put the code in there. GST on sales flows through and def, uh, PAYG income tax instalment flows through. GST on purchases flows through and then it tells you finally that your payment is 1,430. Now what you should also be doing is coming over here and clicking on the left hand side and looking at your GST calculation worksheet. And this highlights the various uh, information again. If you receive the salmon covered, um, if you receive the salmon covered uh, bass statement, then you'll notice on the front sheet you receive this little worksheet here and that is what this is, mirrors this, okay? Um, and then popping back here, GST audit report, if I pop back here, this highlights everything uh, that has like being allocated to GST on income, everything that's been allocated to GST on expenses, okay? So that's important. I also will look at, let's see if I can find it, under reports, under all reports, doo -doo -doo, and um, GST oh, it's like an exception report but that might be not be the right one, no that's not the right one. Hmm. Detailed account, here, this is it, I find it a little bit odd, oddly named, but um, under general ledger, I think that it's really funny because I think that this report is the most important report but it's, it's kind of hidden away. Um, okay, so this is my general ledger exceptions report. So if I pull back to 1st of July and click update, what it does is it prints out exceptions. So interestingly enough, it says the reason. So the exception would be uh, you allocated GST free, however the default code was GST. So that's an example of an exception. Now, um, 
this has given you the reason for the issue and it's just said this is really high, <laughs> this is really high, this is really high, this is really high and that's great. So it, it's not saying there's something wrong but it's just saying that, that, that there might be something you need to look into. You may have put an extra zero there. And so that's another report I would look at before I did my activity statement. Now I want to highlight with you, I'm popping back to the business activity statement. Um, what you then do at the bottom is you come in and this is the way that M1, uh, zero works is that you come in as the advisor and you go, yes, I've checked everything, I've entered all this, I then publish it. And I come in here and I have the opportunity to put in um, special things, so I'm just going to put in this advisor and I could change um, my colours if I wanted to. Look, I could go in, I'm, I'm pink, I could have a cover page, I could show a table of contents and I could then publish that. And nothing else has been published here, um, but, but typically, so I did one for a client this morning and, and you imagine he had Bass report, he had Bass, uh, he had Bass management report, management report, Bass management report, management report, Bass management report. So he had loads of them and what it means that if someone actually goes back in and changes something, you can come back and say, well, at this point in time, this report is published and this is fixed in place. Okay, here I'm going to export the PDF so you can actually have a look at it. Oh, where did it open up? Oh, here it is, I think. Woohoo, look at that. Pink. What a great pink colour. <laughs> okay, and that just gives it to him. And that gives him his bass plus his, all his order information there. So it's all fixed in time. So that's really quite nice. And that was actually a great pink colour. Now, we've got a few minutes left. And uh, I want to... Um, I've had a question, I've had a really good question come through. Um, the question is, last year I tried to submit a client emp dupe file through my BAS portal, however the ATO advised I was only allowed to submit my own. Okay, so what you need to do is with your emp dupe file, let's see if I can go back in and grab my file. Uh, let's, oh, let's see if I can do that. I'll pop this over here. I'm just going to pop this over here because at the moment I can't create an mdupe file in. Ooh. Oh, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. That's not the MYB we want to be looking at. This is the MYB. Sorry, sorry, I pulled up the wrong file then. I want to uh, go in here. I'm going to go through and produce my mdupe file. I'm going to create it. I'm going to create it, I'm going to call it, call it de desktop, I know I've got so much stuff on my desktop, save, no, I don't want to produce that. And so what you need to do, now if I can now find that file, um, where is it, oh here it is, okay. So here is my emp dupe file. Oops, I know that probably freaked you out. That's my emp dupe file and what I do is I go to my desktop and I grab something called Notepad. Okay, everyone has Notepad. I don't know about Mac users. I don't know about Mac users but typically everyone has Mac users. Everyone has Notepad and you go File, Open, Desktop, and you look for it, so you go all files, empty dupe file there which is open and if I maximise that, do do do, um, I should be able to see the, um, the ABN number of this uh, business. So the ABN number was something like triple one wasn't it? I should be able to go in there, 
I leave the very first number, I can't remember what the, um, set up uh, company information, a, oh, ABN number wasn't that, it was 80 one So can I see 80 one Anyway, I go in and I actually change it in this file and there it, is that it there? Yeah. This is the identity, so that hopefully answers your question there. So we actually go in and I override the um, ABN number there and then I save it. And then that makes it a suitable emp dupe file for me to submit to, to um, the, the BAS. Now, I had another question there. Let me get to it. No, not that. Oh, okay, so the other question was there. Um, there's another program that you can use to submit. Yes, let me move that up. And so if I pop back here, and I want to close that down, I want to pop back here. And there's another program, let's go Google. And it's called Gov Reports govreports.com.au, essentially GovReports does what the ATO should really be doing but the ATO um, falls over occasionally um, because perhaps the technology is a little bit old. But I didn't say that but uh, so GovReports does that and you can simply log in, log in, upload and it will sit in a wait queue for you. So you don't need to uh, you don't need to keep resubmitting because I know that there's been a problem with the BAS recently trying to submit. So that has been a bit of an issue. So that's something you can use. It is um, a little bit pricey, but uh, I think that's sort of typically the price that a BAS agent would need to be paying. But I guess if it saves you time, then it's worth doing. And a lot of people rave about it. Okay. So where did I, I've, I must have closed down my zero report screen. So it's now, it's actually um, 7.57. I just want to quickly, look, if I can take you for a minute and show you my zero, I should be able to just pop back into it. Um, Okay, I can pop back into it. Look, just let me, give me two minutes. What I want to highlight in Xero, especially uh, with us as being um, ACCA members, if you click on Advisor and if you then click on this option here, Management Report, this is a fabulous report that um, highlights to the owner or the business manager what's happening in the business. So you can see they've got a summary here, profitability, balance, um, performance, gross margin movements, net profit movements, average debtor days, and it comes through with a cash summary, a cash summary, and a uh, profit and loss summary. And you can manipulate it to um, appear as per the ranges that you want versus budget, comparing uh, comparing year to date and progress, etc. Age payable, age receivables, and again, just like I did with the BAS, I can publish it and fix it at a point in time. So I'll highlight the executive summary to you, and this really gives the uh, manager of the business a dashboard of information to work with. Um, okay, fan fabulous. So that has uh, brought me to the end of this session today. Um, I tried to cover a lot in a very short space of time. Um, so it's a matter of uh, please give us feedback if you want me to go in and do more information on um, um, either software or either particular area. I have had some questions through so if I can quickly answer them. Uh, does zero payroll do the same things as MYAB payroll? Yes, it does. I just didn't have um, time in an hour to cover both of them comprehensively. Uh, at the moment, zero payroll does not have an MDUP file, the EMPDUPE file, but it will for the next payroll year. And I've also been asked, once you have completed the BAS, can you post it and it automatically does the GSD PAYG entries or is it a manual journal entry? No, it is a manual entry. Um, not, neither program you actually enter it as a journal entry. 
you enter it either as a uh, typically a purchase uh, and uh, allocate it that way. Okay, fabulous. Um, if there's any more questions, please ask them. Otherwise, let me put up my screen. So we've had Q&A. Um, thank you very much for attending. Uh, my Twitter handle is Heather Smith AU. If you want to say hello, please. Um, I invite you to connect with me. I also encourage you to join the ACCA LinkedIn group, which has a lot of uh, useful and interesting discussions and support for people there. Um, if you see my book in a bookstore, pull it out, put it on the top shelf <laughs> next to Richard Branson book. And thank you very much for your time. Um, Lay, if you're um, at the other end there, I know you said your microphone wasn't working too well. If you want to say anything, um, where are you? Do you need to say anything, Lay? No? Okay. Sensational. Thank you very much, everyone.